Welcome to Friday Favorites. This is the time of our show where Kim and I bring one of our absolute favorite items of a certain category. So we've talked about puzzles, art supplies, toys. Today is all about books. And we find that books are really hard to find really quality books Mm -hmm. that are worth the price tag and that is worth the space that you're going to put it in your home and your kids are going to enjoy it. It's going to be a great experience. So we've brought two of our favorites today that we know are going to be hits with your family. Right. So I was telling Mary earlier, I was at Barnes and Noble this weekend with my own kids and I feel like I know books. I know how to pick a good book, but there are so many books in the kids section and I got overwhelmed and just looking at all the different ones. A lot of them have, you know, the little puppets or Mm -hmm. toys or animals Mm -hmm. that go with it, which I think is great because you can add to it, but I myself got overwhelmed. So I, I love a book that I know how it's used with kids or it's been recommended to me. And so I brought one of my favorites today. It's called All Better. My sister introduced me to this book. I just did it yesterday with a kid, but what it normally looks like is all of these, there's a little band-aid that goes on the same color. So right there, you can take them all off and match colors. Let me find a couple more. So right now you're just matching colors and each band-aid has a little animal on it. There's a dog, a monkey, a sheep. Here's all the animals right here. So every page you go through and it talks about how one of the animals got hurt. And it has the same little phrase at the end. You kiss it, put a Band-Aid on it, all better. And I always have mine go pat, pat, pat on top of the (laughs) Band-Aid just to work on that word. But what you do is you see what happened to the animal. Oh, and you go back here. And so we're going to get the puppy Band-Aid because you're matching animal to animal. So here you matched colors. Now you get to match the animal and you find out, oh, it's on his hand. And every single animal has a different body part where they got hurt. So you can work on body parts there. So you put it on, you can kiss it if you want to put a bandaid on it and pat, pat, pat. And a lot of times the way that I do it by level is if we're needing to go quick, we'll just turn the page and, oh, he hurt his hand. We don't even have to go through the whole process of how it happened. Oh, he hurt his hand, put the bandaid on and go through there. So each one, you know, the monkey fell and he bumped his head. So we can talk about his head, go back here, you find your monkey bandaid, and then you're going to put it on his head. So there's another word you're working on, on, you can take them off. And then for your older kids, you can go through and do it page by page or even at the end. How did the puppy get hurt? How did the monkey get hurt? And have them retell that story um, back to you. So answering some of those WH questions, recall. It's a great book that you can just take all the band-aids off and let the kids put the band-aids on. That's fun too. If they're not really even at the reading level, the band-aid on, just matching the animals. But as they get back bigger, you can work on what happened, how it happened, and you're making them all better. So it's really fun. It's a cute one. And here's the elephant. He stepped on his own trunk. And mm-hmm. so then we put it on there. So the kids love it. I think the most difficult thing is keeping track of the band-aids, which has been yeah, the yeah. hardest mm-hmm. part in our mm-hmm. house. And so at the end of the book, I really try to go back and put them all on the front page And it's just one that I try to keep track of a little bit more so the Band-Aids stay together because it's not as fun when you have a missing Band-Aid. So it's cute. It is one of my favorite books. We actually have that book. Yes, we do because it's a great one. And, you know, I find that a lot of families, when their child isn't communicating a lot, Mm -hmm. one of the number one goals that they will have is I wish they could tell me when they're hurt, Mm -hmm. or I wish they could tell me when they're feeling bad. Mm -hmm. And I find that going through books like this, playing doctor with a doctor kid, Mm -hmm. you know, if we want our goal to be that they can come and tell us Mm -hmm. that they're hurt, and where is hurting, then we need to understand the vocabulary of that, like, uh oh, kiss it, right. you know, pat it, and then also understand body parts. Right. So mm-hmm. if they can know that vocabulary, then they're going to be way better set up 
to be able to tell you like, oh, my tummy hurts. Mm -hmm. And the best way to teach it is through fun. Right. And understanding those routines. So the next time they get hurt, you can do the same routine that's going to hopefully help them move through it a little bit better. Uh Uh-oh, I'm going to kiss it. I'm going to rub it. You know, that same routine that they're used to and they know and they've learned when they're not hurt and then when they're not Mm -hmm. upset we'll come back to them in that moment and hopefully you can talk through it and it'll help them know, Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to put a bandaid on it and it's going to be all better because they've learned about it from a book when they were in the state of mind where they could understand it and listen. And Mary, what did you bring today? Okay. So today I brought this book. It's called let's find Momo. And as you know, if you've been a listener for a while, Kim and I really love books that have beautiful pictures and illustrations and a step that is easier for kids as they're learning as if it's real pictures. So if you find that maybe a child isn't quite interested in illustrations and books yet, you want to go towards some books that have real pictures in it. This book is all about the dog Momo. And as speech pathologist, let me tell you, that's a good dog name. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Spot, Clifford, way too difficult right. for early learners. So Momo is great for kids, gosh, as early as like 12 to 18 yeah. month range, yeah. you know, it's like a great one. So changing that vowel from mama yes. to Momo. Yes. And that O vowel is trickier. So Mm -hmm. you're right. Kind of chaining into the O Momo is a good one. And if they call it mama, that's okay. We'll get there. Let's find Momo. This is a search and find type book. And so, okay, look at this, Kim. That's really cool. Oh, how fun. That's a real picture. Yes. It's real pictures and it shows exactly what you're going to find and it's Mm -hmm. labeled. So it's a real picture and you're saying hot dog momo and then it has four things and you're going to find that in this scene now this is obviously a more graduated search and find Mm -hmm. busy this is the level of more the 12 to 18 month range and then you can find it for them and say momo look i Mm -hmm. found momo so you can show them and some aren't quite as busy like something like this Mm -hmm. very very kind of empty scene and then you're finding them Now, if you are with like a two to three-year-old or older, then you're working on those awesome location phrases. Right, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah, is that, you know, a lot of those early learners, they have the nouns down. They've got this huge inventory of nouns, Mm -hmm. but then we're looking at it and going, wait, we don't say in or under or between. Great way to practice in the box or where is the glove? It's on the chair. And then you can incorporate new vocabulary like that, like shelf that they might not Mm -hmm. have yet. So this is a really, really pretty book. Goes through a lot of different scenes. And again, Momo is the constant in all of them. So if you want to just go through first and all you're doing is finding Momo, that's a great way to do like a first run through the book and it's fast and easy. And then as they get more engaged in it, you can label, this is such a great picture to say, this is a sock, Mm -hmm. sock, you know, it's just, yeah. And it's got this nice plain background. Then you can find all the different ones in the book. I've never seen that book. That's a really good one. It's a really great one. And it does, it just has some good vocabulary. Kim, we have always talked too about speech sounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a great one too, that If you're working on L's or R's, S's, you can incorporate those sounds and then you're just doing a quick warm up, but you're also working on speech and language while you're doing your play is that we can incorporate all these sounds in just our everyday things we would do already. So let's find Momo is a great one. That's cute. And I love books that when kids are little, they can just enjoy looking at those bright pictures when they are real life pictures, like in that book, Mm -hmm. kids really enjoy just looking through at the pictures. And when they're older, they can try to do that search and find themselves. They can look on the left side, see if they can find it on the right. So it's a a great book for kids to stay engaged with, with themselves for a while. So that's a really cute one. Yeah. I like it. Well, thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed Friday Favorites and we will see you here next time. Okay.